Oh, we'll continue we in the entry of Ger, of Sojourner, where a person, the Pelioi says, the person has to remember, we are all here only temporarily. And therefore, what is our focus every day? Should I be busy thinking about how to make more money and how to be able to afford that fancy car and to be able to buy those nice moldings? Or should my main focus be serving a Kodesh Baruch Hu? I need to make money for to be able to support my family, to pay for my necessities, my basics and my needs. But my main focus is to serve a Kodesh Baruch Hu and not to waste all my time chasing the pleasures of this world. So therefore he says, that what? That if the last time we said that a person who goes and tries to make so much money, he doesn't realize that a Kaddish Baruch Hu will give him a lot of expenses. And a person who is, is content with making less money, he'll make the same profit as he would if he would make a million dollars. He'll make that $100,000 profit and he'll have $900,000 of expenses. If Even if he works and only makes $200,000 this year, he also will all have less expenses and he'll end up with the same profit. You know why? Because the Kaddish Baruch Hu is deciding how much you keep in your pocket anyways. So no matter how big numbers you bring in, at the end of the day, what's going to be in your pocket is going to be in your pocket. That's what Hashem decided. So therefore, why should you go kill yourself to make such big numbers? If it comes, it comes. If it doesn't come, it doesn't come. But the point is that I don't want to spend my whole day doing that. I want to spend as much time as I can serving Kadesh Baruch Hu. So therefore, he says that a person who wants to make La Sotorah Tokeva, he wants to make Torah his main pursuit. Most of his day involved with study and his profession only secondary. He goes to work 11 to 2, 3 hours a day, check on the employees, make sure everything's okay. The rest of the day is doing misvot. He should know. Muftahlo is promised, guaranteed. He should, he will not lack any sustenance. He will receive what he's, what he's supposed to get. He's not going to be lacking. Baruch already promised. Noten lechem. We say every day before we break the bread. HaKadosh Baruch Hu, He gives nourishment to all for His kindness endures forever. We say, You open your hand, you satisfy the desire of every living thing. This is a person sometimes endures inconvenience, pain, and great toil in this world. What does he do? The guy wants to make... $10 million this year. So he's working, he's working, he's working so hard, he has stress, this person, that person, this person tried to mess me over in business, this employee is being annoying, this problem came up from the government, I got this ticket, I have to go and come into the hours that I didn't expect I was born. that kid all of a sudden in school, all of a sudden I need to do this, he's all busy all over the place, and what? He's so busy, come to learn, come to pray, oh, I can't, I'm tired, oh, I can't, I don't have time, oh, sense of being, his whole life, he sacrificed spirituality for the sake of physicality, even physicality, he didn't get because it, it was all stress, all trying to be, uh, you know, on the rat, rat race to get the hamster wheel to get to the next place, and what? Akol, he's suffering from olam and olam he doesn't have, Akol all because he wishes to pursue luxuries and the pleasures known to man, hen hen adam, if you would only realize this is an affliction, this is a suffering, Yetzara says, come, 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 don't be busy with mitzvot, forget that, get this, you gotta enjoy, you gotta drive that fancy car, you gotta make sure you have that nice house, you gotta make sure you fit into like everybody else, and what? Ends up being no mitzvot, no lama ba, ends up being, he's suffering the whole time, he's all stressed out, he finally makes the money, he's too tired even to go out, he doesn't even enjoy the money he worked hard for, he says he's 60 years old, I worked my whole life, what do I have to myself, I don't even know how to read, so therefore what? He says, Zuhu, Zuhi, Kol Rata Adam. This is a tragic story of man. That what? He says, I'll work, 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 work. And he finally, he's old. Uh, I don't care about the stuff anymore anyways. Uh, here, take my kids. Here, I'll give it away. So ends up being he, what the Yitzhara told him when sold him and didn't even get what he's supposed to get. And what, what fruit does he get in this world? On ceasing toil and anger and stress. He gets up early in the morning in his endless quest for wealth and material success. He raises up early, sits up late, ends up eating the bread of sorrow, as the Tehilim says in 127. And that's just Olam Wait till he goes Olam no mitzvah, no Torah, no nothing. He goes to Shamayim and he says, okay, I'm here. I'm ready for Gan Eden. They say, you have the key? He says, Kakoki, what do you mean? He says, you have the key? He says, I have... Boshoi Denki. No, sorry, that's not the key. He says, I have Ferrari. No, sorry, it's not the key. I have uh, three three massive mansions in Miami and uh, Israel and in New York. Sorry, that's not the key. So what do you want? That's all I worked my whole life for. He says, no, do you have Torah Mitzvot? Uh. He says, no key. And then he see. then Rav Zelik comes, right? His neighbor, Rav Zelik. The, the loser that always went to shul. The loser that always made sure to learn Torah. The loser that made Siyumim all his life. Then he made sure to give Sadaqah and all these things. 
So Rav Zelig, oh Rav Zelig, all the Tanaim, Amaraim, come kiss Rav Zelig on his forehead, big sadi, come, you have the keys. Yeah, Kadesh, he takes out the tea. He goes to Olam Abba, and the other guy says, what is this? I suffered my whole life, 60 years I worked, in order to make it, to make it, to make it, to enjoy. I did, finally rested. I didn't even enjoy for my money. I chai, I'll rest in Olam Abba. Even in Olam Abba, I don't rest. It's the tragic story of man, says the Pele West. So therefore, the coin of this world, he wasted his world, his life for it to go to Lenin Olam And in the end, he goes and received the punishment of Alavonot Bishaim. He'll go in Olam his punishment for his transgressions and his rebellious sins. All the times he disregarded mitzvot, he disregarded learning Torah because he overlooked it while pursuing his fortune. In the end, he didn't even get nothing. That's the that's the lie of the Yitzhara. Therefore, a person has to be careful to be like Rabbi Yaakov Avinu. Avinu Arashon, Yaakov, Bechish Shabbat, all the choices of the patriarchs. What did he ask Hashem? Did he ask Hashem for a big house? Did he ask Hashem Baruch Hu for meat and wine? What did he ask? He said, Lechem Lechol, Beged Lilvosh. He asked Hashem, all I ask you is the bare minimum. Please, I should have bread to eat, clothes to wear. That's all I care about. And everything else, it's not important to me. As the Pekei Avot says, this is the way of the Torah. You want to acquire Torah, you should be able to eat bread with salt, drink water in small measure, sleep on the ground, and a life of deprivation you will live, and in the Torah you will be toiling. Now, it doesn't mean you have to sit there and eat bread and salt and, 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 and just drink water and sleep on the floor. It means... You have to be willing. You have to be willing to even study Torah in that extent, to that point. And you cannot say, no, Rabbi, I only study Torah after I make a million dollars. You know that guy, he said to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, if you only give me $10 million, I'll sit and learn all day, all day. Just That's all I'm asking for, $10 million, I'm good. Hashem says, you know what? Uh, you're a bad deal. I have a guy who's willing to do it for $40,000 a year. He's willing to sit and call and learn all day. Oh, you're too expensive. Why should I go hire you? So therefore, a person has to realize you have to be willing to say, if it means to study Torah, it means I'll have less and I won't make all that money and I'll be with less, I'll have just my basics. I'd be willing to do it. The person says, no, I need this car. I need this house. Patom after I build my house. Patom after I get the car. Patom after I finish this project. And then I'll be dedicated to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. It's a mistake. It's a mistake. It's a You have to be willing to go and live a life of deprivation. And therefore he says, Yes, it's true. People say today, but Rabbi, we're not on that level. That's in the old generations where they're able to, you know, live in tents and uh, just eat bread and be full. Well, we're not strong like that. What do you mean? The Gemara Sachik Tubot actually says, the person who gives tzedakah and Sachik Tubot says, the poor man he used to be rich. Let's say he used to have a wagon. They used to have a horse. He used to go and, uh, and, uh, and have a slave mask, a slave. He used to run in front of him pulling the horse. So let's say a rich man became poor. There's a mitzvah to give him whatever he used to have. If he used to have a wagon with horses, you have mitzvah to give him tzedakah, to give him, buy him a horse with wagon, uh, a wagon going with horses also. So you see that there's a type of person who needs these kind of things. It's important for him to have these luxuries, right? So there it says, the Peliwez, He says, however, that's only if a person has a merit. If a person has a merit and deserves these things, Hashem wants it to have it, so he'll get it. And we have an obligation to, to support him with it, and Hashem wants it to have it. But how do you know if a person, if, a, if Hashem wants you to have it? He says, if, a per, if Hashem will mizdamen, if Hashem brings it to him, and it's easy for him to get it, either people still give it to him, or he he's easily has the money to buy it, so then it shows Hashem wants him to have it. But if a person forces his agenda, he says, I must have it, I want to, he kills himself, he works extra hours, has to show him even the sneaky business, in order to be able on those levels, like he sees other people, people, that's when HaKadosh Baruch Hu, what? Yim tse'uhu ra'ot rabod v'tzarot. That's when many evil distresses will encounter him. Has shalom, Hashem will smack him. And Hashem will say, this is not what you need. This is not for you. And he'll go and make, make a lot of, lot of tsar coming along with this money. As the Gwana Sechah Pesachim says, The one who eats fatty meats and cannot pay for it, he must hide from his creditors in the attic. But what? A person who eats inexpensive food, the one who eats vegetables can even sit in the in the city dump, meaning a public place, and he's not afraid. And the sages tell us, better to eat onion and sit in the shade 
and don't get accustomed to tanugim v'yilebecha rodecha rodefa lecha. And you get used to the luxuries. You'll even lie. You'll even cheat. You'll even kill yourself and take from hours of your day that you're not supposed to give. You were supposed to give that hour to your wife. You're supposed to give hour to the kids. You're supposed to give hour to the Torah. You're supposed to give hour to prayer. And you did it because I have to make more money and more money. I have to be in that level. I let level. I have to be part of that league. And then what? Hakadosh the Baruch Hu doesn't want you to be there. He's not. You're not supposed to be there. And then what? That's when all the suffering comes. Therefore. The person has to know, don't fall for the trick of the Yitzhara and prepare for where? For Olam the real estate, to have the key, to have the key to take out at the right time. Baruch